Okay, hello everyone and welcome to the NESFest 2020 Student Showcase. My name is Meg and I'm organising NESFest this year. For anyone just joining us, NESFest is a youth arts festival for young people who live in and around Lowestoft and that area of Suffolk. And today we're joined by Jack Culpin, who grew up in Suffolk and has very kindly agreed to come and talk to us today about being a musician. So Jack, welcome. So to Thank start you. with, let's, uh, let's just tell us a bit more about yourself and what you're up to at the moment when you're not being part of NESFest. Um, so at the moment, I am currently a second year undergraduate student at University of Suffolk studying music. Um, and through there, I've had plenty of opportunities to do composition and things like that and recordings as well. So yeah, I'm thoroughly enjoying that at the minute. Great. Are you having fun despite all the COVID restrictions? Yeah, it's, it's difficult at the minute because obviously you can't do as much recordings or things like that that we normally get up to, but we're still finding a way around it. So yeah, it's still good fun. Great. And how did you get into music? What was it that inspired you? Was there any particular moment that you thought, you know what, I want to do this? Um, it was kind of, I've always had a passion for music. And when I was younger, uh, my sister used to play the flute and she packed up so that flute put, got put up in the loft and at primary school it was a teacher offered me a lesson on the flute and it's kind of grown from there really so brilliant so tell us um, a bit more about yeah, what, say, what, it's do, from there and, what do you play what types of music do you like to um play? so i play flute and violin um and musically because I was playing a lot of orchestras, it's quite classical music based, so big symphonies and things like that. Um, quite entertaining overtures as well. Um, but in free times and things like that, I normally play um, covers and classical sort of covers and crossovers. Um, I do a lot of arranging as well, so sometimes I play my own arrangements and things like that. Brilliant. And how long have you been playing your flute and your violin? Uh, flute has been for so since year one, so that's now about nearly 15 years. And violin has been since year three, so about 12. Wow, fabulous. And how, so how did you choose quite, those instruments? Quite a long time. Um, as I say, flute was up in the loft and it was kind of offered, offered to me as a chance at primary school. And um, through the violin was through County Music Service um, by off offering whole class tuition through wicket classes. And it was kind of that was kind of where I've grown, grown for the, the violin, gone from there ever since. Brilliant, fabulous. And so, um, so you say you talk, you've spoken about how you perform in lots of different groups. Like, how did you get involved in that? Did you have to audition? Did you start them yourself? Like, what was the story? What's the journey? Um, through, so I started off originally on a Saturday morning session over at West Suffolk, which was through um i found out through a friend really and he said Do you want to come down and try it and that was where it kind of all started um but it wasn't necessarily audition prices it was kind of just join in and have fun with it while you can and as i got to the county orchestra so suffolk youth orchestra and suffolk young strings that was when the audition process had started which was quite daunting to start off with but by that point, um, the key I've found to audition prices is just have belief in yourself and if you go, what will be, will be if, but if you believe in yourself and just start, it will go well. Very true, very good advice. Um, so what is it like being in these orchestras? You know, do you have to go away to, to practice or do you, do you go there for the day or, you know, how, how does it work? Does it happen every week? Um, so the West Suffolk Youth Orchestra happens weekly, um, but the Suffolk Youth Orchestra is, we have set courses of either one day or three to four days um, and a lot of the time they're rehearsed over at Northgate Art School in, its, in Ipswich um, but for Easter we have a residential course at Framlingham College um, where we rehearse there and stay over and dorm there um, with a concert at Snape at the end and the highlight of everyone's year in Suffolk Youth Orchestra is the European tour in the summer. Where, where do you go in Europe? Is it different every time? Yeah, it's different every time. So I've been involved in five different tours now. And so far I've done Germany, um, Italy, Spain. 
and Poland as well. Wow, so it really does take you all over the place with your music. That must be exciting. Yes. Yeah, and some of the, some of the venues that we go to as well are amazing. And do, are the people friendly when you when you perform? Are they generally kind of up for coming to your concerts, or are they really scary and kind of like well, we don't speak any English? What's this? No, it's they're all really um, open, open arms and acceptors. I mean, I, I remember the first year um, they were waiting for us to come out of the auditorium at the end and to carry on their applause. Great. Um, so that was quite amazing and an amazing feeling to experience as well. Um, but no, gen generally they are all very accepting, and we we perform to sixty to seventy percent capacity at least. On wow, tour. that's really exciting. So yeah, okay. it's good fun. Cool. And you also do a bit of composing as well. Is that right? Uh, yes. So co composing um, on a larger scale, rather than just for. Um, GCC's and A-levels, for instance, um, actually started through my course leader at university who had an opportunity to compose game scores for a potential game that's being come out for, so uh, for Sony. Um, so it was quite a big project that was done in collaboration with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra as well. Um, so getting them involved and getting them to play a piece and to have input from them to talk about instrument ranges and all things like that was a really big insight. And I've just had another big composition job that I was commissioned to do for a um, new cruise company. And again, that was great fun to do. It's, I always find it difficult to compose original music, but actually when you actually get into the flow of things and get a mindset into it, it's quite rewarding at the end of it. And I mean, I wouldn't associate classical music composition and games together. Um, I wouldn't have thought they were together, but... Um, you know, like, is that a common thing? Is that lots of games use classical music in that kind of way? Um, it's more, games now more, no, normally use more songs, so they get our um, mainstream artists to write music for them as well. Um, but some games, if it's just background music, then they will sometimes just stick classical orchestral music over the background. Um, and that was what this was for. It was, uh, we were given different genres of the scenes. And it was a case of, yeah, we compose, you compose for that genre and we'll put it in a hat and see if it gets picked. Wow, that's really exciting. So, well, no, gonna, I think um, we, we've got some of the clips of that that we're going to have as part of this showcase later. So um, people can listen yes. to that work later, which is brilliant. Um, so obviously, you know, that, that's all happening now. But when you were younger, um, did you have any opportunities, say, outside of your orchestras to get involved in music? Was there music in your school or any groups that you joined that way? Or was it all a kind of separate thing? Um, through, there's a lot of opportunities that were presented to me through the Canton Music Service that um, didn't involve the youth orchestras as such. So, for instance, one of the opportunities I had was to do a solo for a... Sorry, that's the dogs. Um, we had a um, concert with uh, City of London Symphonia, and I had the opportunity to do a, um, perform Green Thieves as, as a solo um, in front of a load of small um, children to try and get them involved in music as well. Wow. Which is a great opportunity. Um, performed at Ipswich Region Theatre with members of the RPO as well, doing a Bonthi night. In, um, in, um, prior to their concert and then after that it's just been a case of through school there's quite a few opportunities that I had. Brilliant so um, there, there's a lot going on to get involved in if you want to. Yes. Fabulous. There is, there's, there's loads of opportunity even schools or through the music service. Okay, so if you could go back and tell your younger self, um, you know, in another life, uh, is there if there was one thing that you kind of know now that you wish you'd known when you were younger, like what would you tell them? Um, it's kind of just embrace every opportunity that comes your way because yes, it might seem daunting at the start, but by the time you get into it, you meet new people, and it's by the, by the end of it, you have great fun. And meeting new people as well, and I mean, not necessarily people you'd meet in mainstream school, and but they're like-minded people who a lot of the time you'll just click with. 
Brilliant. And, and presumably, you know, there's a bit of nerves that might go on in that. Like, do you have any tips on how to kind of get over that? Do you just have to push through or do you use any kind of mindfulness techniques or anything like that? Um, originally, when I was younger, so say eight or nine, there were quite a few nerve wracking moments where, say, lead up to performances and things like that, you would always go out. Um, but as I got older, I kind of learned that the fact that I'm not the only one on the stage. Not, not everyone's going to be looking at me in an orchestral setting. They're not here necessarily just to watch you. They're here to listen to the orchestra as a whole. So it's, then that's when it becomes more of a mind over matter. So you think, right, I can use these nerves to help me play better and do, it, do a better performance myself. Okay. And nerves, I, st I still get if I'm doing a solo performance. So nerves will never go away. They're just something that you, you have got to try and get on top of and it's difficult um i mean i still struggle now but it's something that will really help you and benefit you if you can um get on top of that over your mind yeah i mean i still struggle with getting on top of my nerves <laughs> so um yeah good job that you can um so mm. obviously there are a lot of amazing music teachers that are in suffolk and they obviously do like a great job um and they're really supportive but it must be really hard for them now um with all the COVID-19 restrictions and the fact that you know you can't get together with so many people and all the rest of it um do you have any uh, like advices for music teachers being kind of an insider of them um, in in the music world what you know, um, how could they help it's kind of just <laughs> stick to what you're doing and embrace the difficulties now because they will get easier and it opens more opportunities in the long run as well I mean, a lot of on a, a lot of it is now online tuition as well, or has been, but that also means then that it gives you an opportunity to potentially do more work or take on more students. Um, and yeah, the social interaction at the beginning is key to try and show them what things to do. But it's just a case of just trying to embrace with what you've got, and it's difficult now, but it will soon get easier. And how important have has online tuition and keeping up with your teaching? been for you like still regularly seeing your teachers has that been really important or how have you find that yes yeah, it's, it's been it's been crucial for me um because i'm i will admit that i'm one of the ones where if i don't have anything to work for for a week or two then i will take foot off the gas for a bit but having an upping it to every week has been key and it's maybe keep on top of my work and practice as well yeah really important I guess if you're that's what you're going to do with your life is be a musician you need to keep on top of it um yes. so yeah there, there might be some young people that have been listening to this hopefully they want to get more involved in in music and more involved in all the things that are happening in Suffolk but they don't know where to start and they don't you know know what to do first like is there anywhere they can go to find out more about it um there's a general area on various websites and the county music suffolk county music website is another one there's various open days and school concerts that are held around the county um so if they want to come and see what kind of work that we do and how we do it then there's like there's those opportunities as well um and just speaking to um the teachers at school as well will be and if there's they might know someone who can get in, in contact and have a look um, because they don't just offer school lessons it's either they do Saturday morning as well so it's not restric restricted to school times either so there's plenty of opportunities to get involved brilliant okay well thank you so much I think we'll leave that there for today um, but thank you so much for giving up your time to come and speak to us more about all the musical opportunities in Suffolk um, for anyone who didn't see Jack's performance thank you for having later, me. Uh, it will be on YouTube for the rest of the week so do come and check it out and uh, yeah, check out all the other things on Nestfest as well. So yeah, thank you, Jack. Thank you for having me.